have some bombshell allegations from the U.N. The Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in the Occupied Palestinian Territory has reported receiving disturbing accounts alleging that the Israeli army summarily executed at least 11 unarmed Palestinian men in the Ramal, Ramal neighborhood of Gaza City. The incident, witnessed by family members, has prompted concerns that, quote, raise alarm about the potential commission of a war crime. These accusations come on the heels of earlier assertions that Israeli forces intentionally targeted and killed civilians, according to the statement. In light of these allegations, the UN group has called on Israeli authorities to promptly initiate an independent investigation. Meanwhile, according to the Huffington Post, the State Department is working to block another bid for accountability. Officials are preparing to pressure Switzerland to reject global calls for a conference on Geneva Convention's violations in Israel-Palestine. This comes as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the suffering would end today if only Hamas surrendered. Let's watch. Israel has been very clear, uh, including as recently as today, uh, that it would welcome returning to uh, a pause in the further release of hostages. The problem was and ha has been and remains Hamas. Uh, they reneged on commitments that they made during the first uh, pause for, for hostage releases. Um, and the question is whether they are in fact willing to resume this, uh, this effort. Yeah. The, so, of course, this accusation, this more recent accusation about the 11 people summarily executed comes after a week of images where we saw Palestinian men being asked to strip down and get into the back of trucks to kneel in rows um, in imagery that many Jewish observers likened to Im images that we saw from the Holocaust and other pogroms around the world. Uh, so this is a moment that seems to really call for the kind of investigation that several accusations and incidents, instances of um, uh, throughout the two-month period of the siege have, have warranted an investigation, but there has been some uh, resistance from Israel and the United States, which offers it some political cover, to actually allow th outside third parties in to do exactly that. We've seen um, a real reluctance to allow third-party journalists into Gaza to do reporting. We are now close to 100 uh, local journalists being killed by IDF forces. There has been a notable dip in the amount of information coming out of Gaza as a consequence, uh, as some people are saying, a direct consequence of um, the dip in number of journalists that are even existing on the ground and able to uh, get images out of the territory. And on top of all of that, now we're seeing on a diplomatic level the story about how America is trying to come to some agreement with the U.N. about what accountability could look like in a way that doesn't actually impede Israel's ability to continue its siege. Sure. I mean, I would say that Israeli forces um, obviously can detain um, people they've captured and make determinations about um, whether they are part of Hamas or what is the appropriate way to process those individuals. They cannot obviously summarily execute them on the spot. Um, there should certainly be an ac accusation. rules of war to uh, strip people naked or otherwise humiliate them for the sake of humiliating them. Mm -hmm. um, Yes. As I said, there should be an investigation into whether this took place and um, if some, if uh, members of the IDF did that, they should be held to the strongest possible accounting because that is, in fact, a war crime and is totally, totally um, inexcusable and uh, and should warrant not just condemnation but something being done about it. So I well, we're hearing, don't disagree. And in that clip from the State Department is, of course, that that is not what's happening at all. The U.S. is the U.S. has been maintaining this line that. Everything that bad that happens in Gaza, every war crime, whether it's Israel dry, dropping white phosphorus, whether it's videos from earlier this week of IDF forces doing controlled explosions of residential buildings that have nothing to do with any of the fighting, uh, whether it is the two uh, Christian Palestinians, the mother and daughter pair who were shot uh, leaving uh, the church that was condemned by the Pope earlier this week. None of these instances have changed the response from the U.S. government, which is that as long as Hamas exists and as long as Hamas continues to fight, Israel has carte blanche to do what they will to the entire 2.3 million population of Gaza. Now we're in a situation where one out of every 100 Gazans have been killed. So if, again, you imagine a scenario where you have an area the size of Queens and a population the size of Queens or approximately Brooklyn, where you have, um, you know, 
the, the majority of the housing, the overall majority of the housing that's been displaced, the over majority, um, overwhelming majority of the population that are now refugees inside the pre-existing refugee camp that was Gaza. You have the collective punishment of obviously having restricted food, water, uh, and medicine. And we've recounted at length the depths of the medical crisis that's going on there. Um, there was a recent story that a baby that had been born since the beginning of the siege was just killed. So there's casualties, people who are casualties who never knew a world where the siege wasn't ongoing. You know, and despite all of that, if, the, if your line is, as long as Hamas exists and keeps fighting, that Israel doesn't have to be responsible for any of its crimes, well, that, provide, that, that creates a pretty obvious incentive there. Well, I don't know that that means Israel should not be responsible for its crimes. It can't, again, the fact that they suffered a terrorist attack are now at war with the government of a neighboring area does not mean that they can, or should not mean that they can violate international standards of human rights. And so, no, they can't just, they can't just well, shoot people. Stop they them? shouldn't. Well, I mean, nobody's going to stop them, but I'm saying it's not. Well, I guess they can violate human rights. Well, what are you, I'm saying in a, on a moral level. I'm saying it's not well, right. I, well, if, no, on a practical <laughs> level, yes. It's, I've said this before. It will absolutely continue until Hamas surrenders. So that makes Blinken's point correct. They have license to do this. They are going to do this. And the swiftest way to bring an end to these atrocities would be the surrender of the, of the opponent government. Well, the difference, Robbie, is that Blinken isn't you or I. Blinken is part of a Biden administration that has the direct ability to stop the fighting or stop the siege because it is the siege is being conducted with American money and American bombs and with American diplomatic cover. It is America's veto in the U.N. that is precluding the kinds of um, investigations and the kind of criminal international criminal penalties that could befall specific bad actors in the Israeli government if we didn't provide that diplomatic immunity. I mean, as it should. We're, it's not our job to be the world policeman. We should not offer. So there was I an organization it. called I the United give. Nations that was created after World War II, where we have a permanent uh, veto power, and that we are we are a member of that of that group. If you think that America shouldn't be involved at all in international diplomacy, then it should give up its veto power and simply leave the United Nations. But as a member of the United I'd Nations, start right there. As a member of the United Nations currently, you cannot have it both ways. You cannot say, well, I don't think the Americans should be the world's policeman, so it's allowed to act as the world's policeman, an unethical, dirty cop wait, who is providing you, diplomatic cover for Israel. Didn't you oppose, don't, as, and I oppose as well, sanctioning uh, Russia for what it's doing in Ukraine? It's, first of all, it's not about opposing. Why are you bringing up sanctions when we're having a conversation about bombs that are being dropped on Gaza with American funding and that are actually American. So I, op I oppose the American funding right. of the bombs. That so we, we that, no disagreement so this here. Is the question. But you want us to take Anthony extra Blinken, steps to intervene against Israel. And I'm I, saying I, we should just have nothing to do with it. The extra step that I specifically just cited was the United Nations and international criminal courts not being blocked by the United States from having the power to hold the Israeli government and the bad actors in the Israeli government accountable for the war crimes that they are committing. What does that have to do with sanctions? I'm, you want us to intervene to have some investigation of Israel? I'm saying I want, us to I want to stop butt out of the conflict. I want, right. to, I want to butt I want out of the United conflict, United just like I want us to butt out of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I want the United States of America to stop intervening and blocking the U.N. from doing its job. No, you wanted to vote to establish a investigation. And, like, I don't care if the Geneva, Actually, if no. they investigate, America as long as they're con investigating atrocities committed on both sides and we're going to call we're going to call Israel and Hamas to answer for what they've done. Of course. Fine. But Amer America doesn't have to vote, actually. No one's looking for America's vote because everyone else in the world is already voting to stop to, for a ceasefire and to end the atrocities. It's like America, Israel, in some South Pacific island that are the only people in the entire world who are not opposed to the end of the war crimes in Gaza and the 20,000 people who have been killed in the last two months, 70% of which are women and children. So America, we're not looking for America's vote. We're looking for America to get out of the way and stop providing diplomatic cover for what are, is now a list of war crimes that is so long that it's overwhelming, and it feels almost like a pylon to just articulate the true facts about what's been going on in the Gaza Strip. I mean, it's Strip. war, Brianna. It's war. They're at war with the government of the neighboring population. I, I want it to end right now. I want no one further to be killed in, a conf in this conflict between the Palestinians and the Israelis, and it's terrible, and 
I don't know how it, but it, there's going to be conflict until, until Hamas surrenders. That's our position, that's Israel's position, and that's going to be the reality. So, so then why would we not so it's, just it's say— So it's very interesting. That's, that's Hamas's position, that it's going to keep bombing Israel until Israel surrenders. Right. So. Given that that's Hamas's position, that's <laughs> no. why Israel's going to do what Hamas— It wasn't always Hamas's position. There was many efforts at peaceful protest. In America, we said it was illegal to boycott Israel. In America, uh, in, in, in the Gaza Strip— Never should have done any of that. Thousands of people were shot— maimed and injured by the IDF as they tried to peacefully do the March of Return in, in 2018 and simply peacefully protest for the end of the occupation in Gaza. They were met with murder and state violence from Israel, for which they were never accountable in the international criminal system. Yeah. And so now, after years and years of a lack of accountability for their war crimes against Palestinians in the West Bank, which we are not really getting into right now, which of course has no Hamas, there have also been kidnappings and killings and summary murders of Palestinians that have escalated un incredibly in the cover of this conflict. Um, and so this is the situation that Palestinians are in. And it is not a shrug, I wish we could do something about it situation. It is an, our government and our tax dollars are directly paying for this. Meanwhile, Israel just announced that they will be paying for free college education for all of its IDF fighters, again, receiving more money from the American government than any other country in the world. Well, we should cut that off. We do agree on that. More rising right after this.